Okay, next up, we're going to talk about customer personas. Uh, stop me when I sound like a broken record, because uh, these are super important. Um, you know, as part of an overall strategy, if you don't know who you are selling to uh, specifically, then you can waste a lot of resources, both time um, and financial, um, chasing the wrong people to go and sell uh, your service or product uh, for your company. And so, nailing these things down, uh, you know, enables your team to be very specific with their marketing or sales efforts, uh, which is much better than casting a wide net and hoping that people uh, come in. And so it will allow you to customize and tailor uh, your messaging and uh, you know be more specific with everything that you do within your company. And so that being said, um, I created just a, a, a document. You know, if you, ha- if you have an idea of who your customers are, if you've already sort of um, have a customer base, but you maybe need to sort of clarify it and put it, put it to paper, um, you know, maybe this will be a little bit simpler for you because you know some of these characteristics off the top of your head. They come sort of as a, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, first instinct to you. Uh, but if you haven't, then, you know, going through the process of interviewing who you think your ideal customer is, you know, reaching out to them and going through a series of interviews um, will clarify a lot of, uh, you know, who actually is going to be sort of purchasing your product or service. And so um, going through this, you know, you want to get sort of some, uh, you know, name you know, generic name, not, you know, specific names of somebody. Um, so Johnny Job Seeker, you know, for us, our, you know, a lot of our uh, core names are, you know, uh, Valerie, VP of marketing, you know, just something that's sort of cute that, you know, you can put sort of a face and a name to uh, who it is that you're targeting. Uh, role-based questions, you know, if you are sort of um, targeting sort of uh, businesses, a lot of times, you know, these are more pertinent than uh, consumers, but they can still be relevant, right? Um, You know, if you're trying to sort of uh, nail down who these people are that are sort of buying your service, you know, sometimes there's a lot of overlap between people who work at a business that you're selling into and people who work at a business, but they might be uh, a consumer versus, you know, sort of there for a professional purchase. Uh, Job title, how's your job measured, what does a typical day look like, skills required, tools and knowledge you use, who do you report to, who reports to you. Um, So you want to just sort of get uh, uh, an idea about what it is and what they do um, at their job. Company questions, what industry do you work in, revenue count, um, goals, so what are your responsibilities, how do you define success, challenges, what are your biggest challenges. Um, You know, the more relevant questions that might be sort of uh, consumer focused would be sort of information. So what blogs do you read online? You know, where are they getting their sources of information? Um, and who do they sort of associate with? So finding sort of that popular, those popular watering holes, you know, both on and offline uh, can be super helpful for um, understanding about, you know, what people read, how they're sort of getting educated about, um, you know, making, uh, making purchases and how you can sort of more clearly articulate who it is that you're targeting. Um, and so jumping into um, growth on, so we have a, a persona definition uh, and, and as you can see on the left, we have a number of different people sort of in the uh, growth arena, right? So VPs of marketing, CMOs, digital, uh, digital marketers, head of growth, uh, you know, marketing managers, product marketing managers. There's a lot of different roles in marketing and growth uh, for individuals to sort of come in and sort of, you know, stake their impact. And so each one of these actually has their own uh, persona definition and, uh, you know, set of criteria, right? Because each one of them is a, uh, is a different job with, um, you know, typically, you know, you know, more generally uh, different information. And so demographic information, you know, is sort of the standard stuff. You know, you want to know um, typically, you know, their age, sex, uh, relationship status, children, um, you know, what their jobs are, what sort of companies they're targeting uh, in terms of revenue count, head count, et cetera, um, and what industries they're in. You know, down here, it gets into the more, um, uh, you know, contextual information, you know, the stuff that sort of really starts to pa- paint the, the picture about who it is you're targeting. So what their challenges are, um, you know, I mean, you really want to sort of understand their pain points, right? You want to understand why it is that they would be searching for your solution because a lot of what comes down to, uh, uh, you know, purchases that is that they are, you know, either whether they know it or not, they're suffering from this, uh, this problem, right? And they've sort of happened upon your solution that you're selling. Um, you know, a problem doesn't have to necessarily be sort of this robust, sophisticated uh, marketing solution, right? It could be as simple as, 
you know, seasoning for food, right? If people didn't realize that there's a better seasoning out there, um, why are they objecting to, um, you know, the sales? So, um, you know, getting an understanding about what it is that is, maybe it's a messaging thing, maybe it's, um, you know, an inherent, um, you know, problem with the product or service, you know, getting to the point so that you can fix those objections or have clear answers about um, how, uh, you're overcoming those objections, you know, when they're sort of kicking the tires on your website is super important. Um, pain points, you know, you want to get to the deeper insights about um, why this is a challenge to them. Um, and be specific about why this is painful for that specific persona. Um, their buyer role in the purchase process, you know, I mean, this doesn't have to be super sophisticated. I mean, if you're talking about, you know, a mother um, that's being the primary purchase decision for, you know, a $5 uh, product for her kid. And, um, you know, that's a different, you know, animal versus, you know, navigating, uh, you know, uh, the C-suite. Um, but starting with marketing managers and sort of, you know, upselling to the, uh, the, the more leadership positions of a company. But each, you know, involves mapping out who it is that you're targeting because you might end up being sort of targeting kids, but the kids are going to go to the parents in order to sort of make the purchase decision, right? And so being able to sort of articulate who it is that you're marketing to, but who it is that um, where they sit in the sort of the purchase process, do they have to get buy-in from some from other people? Um, you know, it's helpful for um, clarifying for you and your team about how that process goes. Buyer goals. So are they, you know, what are they trying to do in order to sort of solve this problem, right? So buyer goals um, allows you to um, get in the mind of what they're trying to accomplish by purchasing this and how does your uh, product or service help them accomplish that goal. Um, and so really that's sort of matching the, the problem solution, right? And so being able to sort of uh, clarify what it is that they're there for, why uh uh, they've come and sort of kicked the tires in the first place and why they'd be a good um, uh, why your offering would be a good opportunity to sort of solve their issue um, you know is, is helpful sales solution um, you know this isn't as you know this could be as complicated or as uh, simple um, as you as you need it to be right if it's sort of a complex software sale it might you know involve this sort of you know uh, you know, fully involved uh, solution sale. You know, if you're e-commerce, it may just be that, hey, put, you know, good looking clothes, uh, you know, in a newsletter and have a, a good experience um, on your website. But being able to sort of understand how people purchase and what the, um, you know, that full solution looks like um, is extremely, extremely helpful. Lastly, you know, buyer values, what are the value? Um, you know, more getting into the uh, mental state of the purchaser, you know, are they sort of envisioning them a better version of themselves? Um, are they, uh, you know, what are they trying to sort of, what are they try? what do they value? What, how are they sort of trying to get uh, better, you know, for that sort of idealized uh, version of themselves? And then lastly, you just want to keep track of information sources, you know, social networks, blogs, popular books, magazines, because this is where you're going to be reaching out to them. I mean, all of this information that you're getting about buyer, buyer personas, uh, you're going to be using it and filtering for social ads uh, because you can't actually do uh, tar highly targeted advertising without uh, relevant filters. You know, if you end up going in and saying, I just want to blast everybody on LinkedIn or just, you know, a larger, I want to, I want to just, you know, cast this huge net on Facebook, you're going to end up spending a ton of money on people that don't really, um, we're never, ever even really considering to be uh, customers in the first place. And it doesn't have to be just related to social ads. You may say, well, I'm not doing social ads. Well, what about the messaging on your website when they come to the website? What about uh, the uh, if you're writing blog posts, what about that? Or if you're doing you know, uh, direct sales, you know, having an articulate uh, uh, view, clear view of who it is, who your personas are. And it doesn't have to be eight you know, different personas, right? You know, you know, more realistically, you have, you know, one, you know, two, three, you know, a very few amount of people that, you know, you're a niche business that are your customer types, because uh, that'll simplify a lot about your marketing and your sales approach, um, and it will allow you to more efficiently and effectively um, allocate resources, knowing that it's going to be 
um, you know, utilized in a, uh, a proper manner. So uh, definitely recommend that. Uh, get more than, uh, you, know, you know, the process would be find 10 people, right? If you already have 10 people, go and interview them and make sure that it's clear that way. If you are just starting out and you're trying to figure out who your customer is, go on LinkedIn or reach into your personal network and ask to interview, you know, 10 people. You will learn so much from the process of talking with your customers about what it is they want, um, what it is they value, what their objections might be, uh, you know, through those those brief conversations. That, and you might even, you know, if you're doing it correctly, you might even cultivate, um, you know, better relationship with, with existing customers or be prepping your uh, your first customers. And I wouldn't even stop at 10. You know, it's uh, important to sort of continue the uh, process of uh, defining who your personas are and doing it over time. And that's why we have sort of these uh, documentation lists to sort of be able to go back to and understand um, what those uh, what those personas that we created were at that point in time. But these should be sort of a living, breathing document um, that are updated constantly with new objections, new challenges, because the world is not this static place, right? It ends up, uh, you know, changing you know, day to day, hour by hour sometimes. Uh, and so um, just something to keep in mind.